Hello everybody, this is Craig. I uh, had a bit of a problem today. I had a computer crash and so I'm um, creating today's video which I meant to create yesterday on the machine that was crashing um, is being done on my laptop so I don't know if things are going to work out quite as well but we shall see. I'm worried about this microphone volume so if I sound like I scream, I'm screaming I sort of am. Okay, let's continue where we picked up with the last video. Again, we're doing hypothesis testing. Uh, we're going to either look, make a hypothesis test about a sample mean or about a sample proportion. We're going to do both, and you're going to do several of both in your CT7 work. First of all, let's wrap our mind around what's going on again. What I've drawn is a T distribution, and um, I'm sure you're getting the idea of there are different areas under the curve where we either accept or reject the null hypothesis. In the center is where we accept, or maybe it's better to say we fail to reject, but I just like to say accept the null hypothesis. And out in those end areas is where we will reject H0, the null hypothesis. How do we know whether we're going to accept or reject? Well. Right here, this red line shows what I call t-critical. And this is the t-statistic that we get knowing our alpha level, our significance level, and also the degrees of freedom. We either uh, go in the back of our textbook or Excel will give us that t-value also. And it's equal to some numeric number. It might be 2.05 or 3.06. Then what we do is we calculate a test statistic from our sample data. And our test statistic, our calculated test statistic, is equal to the mean, the sample mean, divided by the hypothesized mean, and then divided by the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And then we can compare the two. We can compare the T critical to our calculated test statistic, and if <coughs> the test statistic falls inside of the critical value, and that's what it does in this case, what do we do? Well, we can't reject the null hypothesis. We must accept it. So in this case, it's obvious since the calculated T statistic is falling inside of the test value, we are going to except H0, the null hypothesis, whatever it was. In this case, we were doing hypothesis of a sample mean. So we had proposed that a sample mean was a certain value. OK. I hate to do this to my nice drawing, but I have other stuff I want to show you. So goodbye. Now, specifically, our work tonight, our work this week, in number 1A, you are asked to calculate X bar, the sample mean, standard deviation for variables 7, variable 8, and variable 9. And these are people's general attitude. about Springdale, general attitude about um, downtown, and the general attitude about our favorite bargain mall, West. Now, this is simple stuff. We've done that before. We've done that last week. And also, I want to jump ahead to 1C, because you'll probably do them in order like this. At least I did. You're also asked to calculate the 90% confidence interval for these, for the same variables for variable 7, 8, and 9. That was last week's. I mean, that's stuff we learned how to do last week. So that shouldn't be a problem, but I'm going to go over how to do it. Okay, in 1B, 
we're asked to do our hypothesis test. We're told our alpha, our significance level is 0.1, which means alpha over 2 is 0 0.05. Might come in handy if we're looking up t values because we know it's a two-tailed distribution. Uh, okay, in your work, you're, they state the null hypothesis is going to be that the hypothesized mean is equal to 3.0. And for these general attitudes, 3.0, I believe, means neutral. They don't feel very strongly, one way or another, about the malls. And the alternative hypothesis is that the uh, hypothesized mean is not equal to 3. Okay, so that'll be your first t-test you'll do. And I believe you'll do this for all three of them. Now, I'm going to show you how to do that. And it's the same way that we've done, I showed you in the last couple of videos. And it's really simple. We're going to do it by calculating, uh, <coughs> excuse me, by taking a, calculating a t-statistic and comparing it to a critical t-value. Okay, 1D says, do this another way. Give me the probability that is related with, or the p-value that's related with the critical value. Uh-uh, let's not do that. Let's skip part 1D. You don't have to do it, because it's just two ways of doing the same thing. Two ways of doing the math for the hypothesis test, and I think this way is easier and more straightforward. Okay, in 2A, we're doing something else. Now we're looking at proportions, where we say H0, uh, the proposed proportion, is equal to one-third, 0 0.33333. And this is for variable 10. And what is variable 10? It's easy to return goods. Okay, so let's see. Yes, and the idea is this. We're going to look at the three malls, and if if the proportions, each of them got one-third of the votes, that would mean that all of them are easy to return goods at, and that's going to be our null hypothesis. The, the alternative hypothesis is going to be that no. That's not true. They're not all equal. And um, think about it. We found that uh, Springdale beat out those other malls in many cases. And you're going to find the same thing. That no, it's that proportion is not equal to a third. Um, Springdale gets higher proportions. More votes in all those other things that were in... Let's see, I didn't write it down. Variable 10, and then you're going to do many more, 11 through 17 as well. 2A, once again, 2B, it's asking about uh, P, probabilities. Again, skip. we got enough work to do in this one. And finally, the last thing you're going to do in 2C is to repeat 2A, the thing I just talked about, repeat. 2a for variables 11 through 17. All right, I'm flipping in my book. Okay. This is a biggie. There's a lot to do. But I think once you get started, you get the first one done, and it's going to become easy. Okay, so what I'm now going to do is uh, finish, com turn, uh, complete this video, and we're going to turn over to Excel and see how to get this stuff done. If I can find the off button.